former Oklahoma City police officer Daniel Holtzclaw reacting to his conviction. This is back in 2015, ultimately sentenced to more than 200 years in prison. Holtzclaw convicted after 13 women accused him of rape and sexual assault. Holtzclaw says he's innocent. And now one of those accusers has changed her story. News Force Jessica Bruno is live at the Pardon and Parole Board. And Jessica, the board denying Holtzclaw's request for parole today. Yeah, Kevin and Jolene, this was a unanimous vote by the board, and it comes just one day after Holtzclaw's team released a deposition from back in 2018, where, as you said, one of his accusers dramatically changes her story. How many times did Holtzclaw uh, touch you inappropriately? He didn't touch me. In this video released by former Oklahoma City police officer Daniel Holtzclaw's legal team over the weekend, Tabitha Barnes, one of 13 women who accused him of sexual assault in 2014, changing her testimony. So this is a mistake. Um, he did not touch me. Holtzclaw was convicted of 18 of the 36 counts brought against him, including four counts of first degree rape and four counts of forced oral sodomy. Prosecutors said Holtzclaw targeted victims in Oklahoma City's poorest communities based on their criminal histories, assuming that would undermine any allegations they brought against him. But he claims he's innocent. Why should he be in prison for something that he did not do, when, especially when the woman is admitting that Daniel never touched her? Jennifer Holtzclaw, Daniel's sister, was hoping the state pardon and parole board would look at that interview with Barnes when considering his request for parole on Monday morning. But in a unanimous vote, Denying. the board denied the request, keeping him from moving on to the next step in the process. It's upsetting just because they should have reviewed it for what it is. The woman clearly states Daniel never touched her. Touched her. She stated it multiple times. Jennifer also says they believe he had an unfair trial judge because his judge, Tim Henderson, has since resigned from the bench due to a sexual relationship he had with a prosecutor. Several convicted felons recently filed requests for new trials because their cases involved both Henderson and that prosecutor. However, Holtzclaw had a different prosecutor at trial. But in a statement, Holtzclaw said, I upheld my oath of office by protecting and serving my community while Judge Henderson was allegedly abusing women and violating his oath. We're all continuing to fight for him. Um, you know, we, we just hope that one day that um, Daniel's given the chance to clear his name. And Holtzclaw will once again be eligible to apply for parole next year in February. Reporting live in Northeast Oklahoma City, Jessica Bruno, Oklahoma's News 4. in the District Court of Oklahoma County, State of Oklahoma, the State of Oklahoma versus Daniel K. Holtzclaw, case number CF 2014-5869. Verdict, count one, sexual battery. We, the jury, impaneled and sworn in the above entitled cause do upon our oaths find as follows. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and set punishment at eight years. Count two, procuring lewd exhibition not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count three, burglary in the first degree. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of burglary in the first degree, nor lesser included. Count four, procuring lewd exhibition. The defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count five, procuring lewd exhibition. The defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count six, the defendant is not guilty of the crime of stalking. Count seven, the defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count eight, the defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 20 years. Count nine, 
rape in the first degree. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree. Count 10, forcible oral sodomy. The defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 11, rape in the first degree. The defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 12, forcible oral sodomy. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 13, sexual battery. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 14, sexual battery. The defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 15, procuring lewd exhibition. The defendant is guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition and punishment is set at five years. Count 16, forcible oral sodomy. The defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 17, forcible oral sodomy. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 18, procuring lewd exhibition. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 19, procuring lewd exhibition. The defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 20, rape in the first degree. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree. Count 21, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 22, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 23, sexual battery. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of sexual battery. Count 24, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy. Count 25, rape in the second degree by instrumentation. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of rape in the second degree. Count 26, indecent exposure. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of indecent exposure. Count 27, forcible oral sodomy. Defendant is guilty of the crime of forcible oral sodomy and punishment is set at 16 years. Count 28, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 29, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 30, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 31, rape in the second degree by instrumentation. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the second degree and punishment is set at 12 years. Count 32, rape in the first degree. Defendant is guilty of the crime of rape in the first degree and punishment is set at 30 years. Count 33, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 34, sexual battery. Defendant is guilty of the crime of sexual battery and punishment is set at eight years. Count 35, defendant procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Count 36, procuring lewd exhibition. Defendant is not guilty of the crime of procuring lewd exhibition. Let me ask the jury, is this your verdict? So say you all? Yes. Counsel, would you like to examine the verdict forms? Not right. Mr. Holtzcloth, you and your attorneys just come forward. Mr. Holtzclaw, this jury finds you guilty of the various uh, counts. You will be remanded to the custody of the Oklahoma County Sheriff for formal sentencing set January 21st, 2016 at 10 o'clock a.m.
three years of legal battles this morning, former Tulsa police officer Shannon Kepler is in jail. A jury found him guilty of manslaughter in the shooting of his daughter's girl or boyfriend, that is. Two Works For You reporter Giselle Puente is live from the Tulsa County Courthouse with what happened last night. Giselle. Lisa, the case wrapped up before midnight here at the courthouse. The jury deliberated for six hours, finally coming to a guilty verdict. Now we do have video of Shannon Kepler being taken in handcuffs to the county jail. That is where he will wait and be in custody until his sentencing. The former Tulsa police officer was tried three times for murder since November of last year, which ended in mistrials. But this fourth time around, the jury found him guilty of manslaughter. The prosecution stated that on August 5th, 2014, Kepler shot his daughter's boyfriend, 19 year old Jeremy Lake. The DA claimed there was no evidence that Lake was armed that night, yet Kepler claimed self defense these past three years. Emotions ran high last night on both sides after the guilty verdict was reached. My son can have his justice that he deserves, and uh, you know, we all as a family get the justice we deserve. The state's witnesses, such as they were, said that. Uh, Mr. Kepler supposedly just shot a man that was trying to shake his hand. There was no, there was no uh, opportunity for manslaughter on this case. Yesterday, Kepler testified that he went over to the 200 block of North Maybell Avenue that night to try and talk to his daughter, Lisa Kepler, to come back home. He said the victim tried to get between he and his daughter. Lisa Kepler said that she never witnessed the shooting, but was near the scene and called 911. Kepler will be sentenced a month from now. The jury has suggested he serve 15 years in prison and pay a $10,000 fine. Reporting in downtown Tulsa, Jitzel Puente, to Works For You. Thank everybody for coming today, uh, this afternoon. Uh, this is obviously not a pleasant uh, discussion for us all to have, but we think it's, it's very important as an agency, an agency with the uh, kind of public trust and uh, the public institution that we are as the, as the Highway Patrol, that uh, the public has confidence in us knowing that we police our own. Uh, with that today, uh, coming forward to uh, visit with you and give you a few details about uh, the allegations that have been made against uh, one of our members. This particular matter sickens us as an agency. I'll say that, say that right up front. Uh, you know, I, I know that the members of our agency as, as a whole, uh, across from one end of the state to the other, uh, these kind of things uh, really, really do hit them to the core. Uh, you know, it's one of the state's most trusted public institutions. Uh, we have to to be as open uh, and be as transparent as possible. So that's why we're here talking today. In this particular case, uh, we have a, a call that our agency received on the 23rd, uh, the 23rd of July. And uh, what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is the things that uh, evolved from that phone call that we received on the 23rd. I'm gonna to confirm to you that this morning that uh, OHP troopers placed uh, Eric Roberts into custody, and they transported him uh, to the uh, to Sepulpa, to the Creek County Jail. Uh, charges are being presented to the district attorney's office for his review. Uh, the allegations, the strongest allegation of which is second degree rape, that is uh, within those allegations. Uh, when you, when we talk about the case, 
uh, our agency received one phone call, one initial phone call on this uh, from a victim claiming that uh, she was sexually assaulted on a traffic stop. We take all complaints serious. It doesn't matter who they come from, or what their walk of lives are, or what their background is. We investigate them all to the fullest. We got the first phone call on this on July 23rd, late afternoon. Uh, we took that call and processed it, and then the following day, uh, our investigators uh, believed that they had credible evidence, uh, believed that they had a, a credible information, and they retrieved evidence from a, a location uh, where we believe that a possible assault may have occurred. Uh, at that location, and then later that evening, on the 24th, uh, on the evening of the 24th uh, of July, uh, our investigators called the officer uh, to the Troop B headquarters in Tulsa without notice, without what, what the reason was he was being called there. He arrived with his uh, patrol unit, and at that point in time, uh, our investigators took his vehicle into into uh, custody to be processed for evidence, and he was placed off. We take it so seriously that information come uh, to us late that evening that we felt like we had credible information, and this investigation needed to be uh, uh, investigated to its fullest. That afternoon after hours, I got the call from our investigator. Uh, I briefed Commissioner Thompson, and uh, after hours, we prepared uh, the documents. I went to his residence, uh, before midnight, uh, we, uh, he signed the uh, suspension notice and uh, Eric Roberts was placed off uh, before midnight that evening. His gun, his badge, his commission card was all retrieved that afternoon. When we get into the details of this case, uh, what we do find, uh, without going into extreme details and particulars, because again, everything here is alleged, everybody gets their day in court, and Eric Roberts will also get his day in court. Uh, or our investigators felt like that as they went back and they looked at this case, they looked at the particular incident in which the caller called in, and then in the meantime, they discovered two other potential victims, uh, alleged victims. Uh, they also discovered uh, three other traffic stops where at least there was question, there's question about, but apparently no uh, assault of any kind of occurred. Uh, in the course of this particular uh, investigation. Uh, we uh, went back and have interviewed uh, the three individuals that were assaulted. We have numerous witnesses and we also have, uh, have uh, interviewed uh, some other stops that occurred. In all these stops, uh, Trooper Roberts turned off his camera and his mic during the course of the traffic stop, which was uh, a, something of a very serious concern to us. Obviously, we feel like there's credible evidence to this as we've filed charges, uh, filed charges, we've placed charges forward for review to the district attorney's office this morning. Uh, we take this matter extremely serious, and we believe that we do police our own uh, very well here for, within the agency. We will be moving forward on a, term, a termination process as far as moving to terminate his, uh, his employment. That's per merit rule. Uh, we are, right now he is still on suspension with pay until we go through the administrative process that it takes to, to do those things. We have the initial phone calls that, that come in. We have to uh, get a hold of the leads, uh, process evidence. Evidence has to be sent to the crime lab. We didn't get our final evidence back until like I believe it was late on Friday. So and then they've got the report to put together and other things and they take forward to the, to the attorney's office. And I think, I think if you actually add it up, it's like 54 days. And uh, really, in a matter like this, that's that's uh, that, that's pretty fast, especially when all you've got say uh, all you've got say, a phone call that this come in with. All these occurred in Creek County, all basically in the Sepulpa area, uh, State Highway 95, I-44, right right basically in that general vicinity. Uh, and they were all during the daytime, during a, a normal work duty. When uh, when our officers get a stop, the, the, the camera should be engaged and should be on during the course of a stop. And in this particular case, it was not. Just a couple more questions. They have the ability to cut those off at any time. Uh, they do have the ability to manually shut shut them off. Yes, Mike, and, and so on. Uh, we, as officers, come into contact normally with people when they're at their most vulnerable. 
when we are on the uh, when they're in a situation that uh, they don't have a uh, uh, an opportunity sometimes to uh, to uh, for us to have an opportunity to see you know what kind of credibility they have or what their character may be. But just because that someone is in that situation does not mean that what they have to say might not be true, and that's why we investigate them all. Obviously, uh, we've gone forward with uh, uh, with what we consider our uh, our credible charges, and we presented it to the district attorney for him to review. Uh, uh, short of that, at this point in time, I, I don't want to go into much detail on the actual uh, actual particulars. Uh, in all fairness, to to a fair trial for for uh, Roberts. Uh, troopers uh, went out to arrest him today. Uh, the, the information came in. We had the, the particular uh, information together. Uh, we felt it was important that we went ahead and took him into custody today. And uh, uh, I mean, so often uh, the public, I don't think, realizes that we do take these things extremely seriously. Uh, this is not just a small deal. Uh, if you look at a, uh, if you look at, a, if you look at a, this, and if this particular matter turns out to be true. Uh, which, uh, uh, once it's been viewed, and if the DA files the charges, and if he's convicted, it represents the ultimate betrayal of a man's oath, or oath to this uh, to his state, to his agency, uh, to his family, and uh, uh, his oath to support, support, and defend, and protect the public. Uh, in that matter, he uh, he was arrested this morning, and really, that's all I've got to say about that. So, with that, thank you. Uh, that's all we have for now. Right there. Ralph Allen Lee Shorty, born February 16, 1982, is an American convicted felonious sex offender and former politician and businessman. A member of the Republican Party, he was elected to the Oklahoma Senate in 2010, defeating several challengers in primary elections re-elected in 2014, and served his term until 2017. Shorty advocated family values during his campaigns and was known for his imposing body structure. During his tenure, he established a Republican consulting firm. Shorty was the state campaign chair for Donald Trump in the 2016 presidential election. So, are there you doing all right today? First off, let me start off with saying I've got a little bit of a blood pressure issue. Okay. So just if I get a little lightheaded. Let me know. Yeah. Let us know. You have a glass of water or anything? No, I'm fine. Um, um, first off, free to go anytime you want. You can stop talking to us anytime you want. No big deal. Just say, hey, I'm done talking. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll let you. And we'll let you out. Let us know if you have any lightness, okay. head, anything like that. Any medical attention will get you out of here. Okay. Get it for you real quick. All right. So, just so I know, what's your last name again? Shorty. Spell it for me. S H O R T E Y. What's your first name? Ralph. Middle. Alan Lee. A L L E N L E E. What's your birthday? February 16th, 82. Yeah, home address? 2105 Southwest 64th. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. What's your phone number? 405 219 9346. 9346? Uh -huh. Alright. <coughs> well, I'd like to tell you on the phone. I guess uh, I had some officers contact you at Super 8. Um, on uh, March the 9th, I think it was, real early in the morning. Yeah, I was And uh, so that's what we're here to talk about. Why don't you tell me what, what transpired there? Well, we were uh, uh, inside talking, and, uh, you know, we heard a bang on the door. I honestly didn't know who it was. Couldn't see through the keyhole or the, the peep hole. And so, um, you know, the... Uh, the young man I was with, I know, has, um, you know, I've known him for, we've been talking, he's come to the coffee shop that I operate a couple times. Uh, shoot, I've even had him over to my house, play video games before. Um, had no idea, told me when I first met him that he was 20. And uh, so when they first got there, I I didn't know what, what the issue was. Um, you know, I uh, didn't know if it was you know, somebody trying to get in or what. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I asked them, somebody they said it was a wellness shit or something like that, and I said, hey, I'm fine. And um, they uh, they were persistent, and then I could finally see a badge, one of them. And then they said that there was a minor inside the room. Um, obviously, I had no idea when I first met this young man. He told me he was 20 years old. Um, like I said, we've been talking on the phone for a while. He, in fact, for a few months, he even told me that he went to California to try to be in the music industry or something. Um, so that was when I opened the door. It was, I mean, it just didn't make any sense to me why, you know, there'd be a, you know. Police there. Actually, <laughs> what I asked him was, I said, are you minor? And he said, no, let me go talk to them. And I said, okay. And, um, he went out there, and that's, you know, I, I don't know what they talked about, but um, I asked him to check his ID. So again, I've never, never even thought to ask him for, for his ID. There's no reason to. Um, so anyway, um, I guess after that, um, um, one of the men, uh, Sergeant something, I can't remember his last name, he's he bald. Um, he lectured me quite a deal. At that point, I, I was... You know, again, blood pressure. Um, I had to sit down. Couldn't, couldn't even really. I don't even honestly remember what I said to him. Um, a little bit, I think. And uh, I just needed to, to not have a stroke. Um, so I was caught off guard by that. I think they asked me at some point if they could search the, um, the room. I had my computer bag with me, and one of the men searched my computer bag as well as the room. Um, as far as I know, there was nothing found, uh, so um, that was that. Okay. I, so they said they, <coughs> pardon me. they said they smelled weed in the in the room. Did uh, were y'all smoking weed or anything? I was not like smoking weed. Was there any in there? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, and I, again, I let I asked them to search. They they wanted to search my bag. Um, so I, I don't remember. I think he. I mean he. He he needed a place to stay for the night. And mm -hmm. I think he had a bag with him. I don't know if they searched that. Okay. I did not. Um. So did you stay there all night after the cops left? Or? No, I left a, a little while later. Well, what, about what time? I have no idea. Okay. I, but I you didn't stay make, until in the morning. I wanted to make sure that I was okay mm -hmm. to leave. Okay. Um, the night so you say you, how long you known the guy? It's been definitely over a year. Okay. What What do you know him by? What's his name? You know his last name? No. No. No, honestly, I don't remember. He's been um. over my car.
I saw him a couple times. Um, he, uh, I know that he had been uh, arrested for drug dealing in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he had dropped out of high school. Um, you know, he was trying to get a, uh, a GED. Uh, I was trying to help him through that. In fact, when we first met, I was trying to help him study and things like that for the GED. Uh, and then when I lost contact with him for four or five months, when I guess when he went to California or wherever, um, I just assumed that he had, you know, I didn't know that's where he, where he went. Well, how did y'all meet? At the coffee shop. You, I'm, I'm pretty sure of, of that. Um, but what coffee shop or not? That was my guy on the coffee shop. Oh, what on, is it? It's called Holy Grounds Coffee. Okay. And uh, uh, 8613 Southwestern. Okay. And, um... I'm pretty sure that's how we met. I honestly don't remember. Um, it's only place I probably would have met the guy. Um, so anyway, he uh, he's been over a couple times there. Um, when he came back, you know, he uh, he was well. In fact, he told me he wanted to go be an anesthesiologist or something. And I you know, said, so you've got to get. You can't go without a high school diploma. You can't do anything without a high school diploma. And so. Um, you know, I know that the day after the incident happened, he was going to test for the GED. Strongly encouraged him to do that. Um, and um, the night that, uh, that he called me, um, he said, you just need to get out of his house. Um, I'm assuming I have, I mean, I thought he had told me that he lived with some friends. And um, he had told me in the past that, you know, it was hard for him to get clean because he was always with his friends that, that uh, you know living with them, um, and so you know uh, when he called and said he needed to get out of there, you know that he had to test the next day. Then the choice was to bring him over to my house, which I don't think my wife would have appreciated that very much. Um, she probably would have been okay with it, but I just, I just felt it figured it'd be easier just to get him a place. Um, and then we decided to talk. So. Okay, so. Um <coughs> Um, how do you, when you, when you, do you text him or how do y'all communicate? It's usually phone calls. Phone calls? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's interesting because, um, on his tablet, he has a conversation that he says he had, that he had with you using an app called Kick. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> he, there's a pretty lengthy conversation on his tablet that uh, he says is with the guy that is you that he um, <clears throat> that is online or the kick kick ID is Jamie Tilly um, and you told officers that night that that's who looked at what you're online he, he called me Jamie uh -huh. and I'm not sure why okay and um, anyways so we, we've got a conversation between him and this Jamie Tilly about um, he says I need money for spring break. Uh, Jamie Tilly says I don't uh, really have any legitimate things I need help with right now. Would you be interested in sexual stuff? He says yes. This goes on about how I can get you. Blah blah blah. Um, we go on. He says uh, he starts calling this guy Daddy. He says hurry up, Daddy. I'm super horny. On March 16, 2017, Shorty was charged by the Cleveland County District Attorney with three felony counts, soliciting of a minor for prostitution, prostitution within 1,000 feet, 300 meters, of a church, and transporting someone for prostitution after he was caught with a 17-year-old boy in a motel room in Moore, Oklahoma. Police reported a strong odor of raw marijuana emanating from the room. According to an affidavit, the duo told police they had brought marijuana with them which Shorty said they were smoking when police arrived. Video from their arrest released by Moore Police show Shorty in the motel room wearing a t-shirt that reads, now go make me a sandwich. Above a cartoon drawing of a sandwich, it cites Ephesians 5.22, a Bible verse that calls on women to obey their husbands. Police said that they discovered sexually explicit text messages between the duo in which Shorty called the teen baby boy and offered him cash in exchange for sexual acts. Shorty turned himself in the same day and was released on $100,000 bond. The FBI and U.S. Secret Service in Oklahoma City both confirmed that they had joined the investigation into Shorty 
and the FBI conducted a search of his home. The age of consent in Oklahoma is 16, but under state law, engaging in prostitution with anyone under 18 is illegal. Hey, keep me updated because I want you bad, Daddy. Uh, a guy named Jamie Tilly says I'm going to uh, I'm going to fuck you like a good little boy if you keep calling me Daddy. This goes on and on and on and on. Well, then it gets to the end. It says, <coughs> it says, okay, I'll be down the street, a couple houses in about ten minutes or so. He says, okay, um, so I have so I have, let me know so I have an idea. Then that person says, I-35 about the exit in four, at 4th four Street. And then it says, I'm here. Well, um, we've got a witness, <coughs> pardon me, we've got a witness that sees him get in a white Grand Cherokee, and they follow that white Grand Cherokee to the hotel, Super Royal 1st Street, 4th and Eastern, uh, at the gas station, uh, and then to the Circle, or Circle K. Yeah, this is the gas station. Yeah, at the gas station, and then fought to the, and then to the Super Eight, where, where the guy in the white uh, Jeep Cherokee and him go in, check, check, and uh, check into a room, and then go back out and go into a room 120. All right, uh, and they sit there until the police show up, where she then calls his dad, and uh, and he calls a intern calls the police, and the police show up there to 120, knock on the door. And then you come out. So, again, I ask, you told officers that you have online identity, Jamie. Um, this guy, or uh, Hagen, saying that he was talking to you. We got a witness putting you, picking him up at the same time that this message was sent saying, I'm here. So, I, I kind of got to say that Jamie Tilly's you. It's not me. It's not you. It's okay. We communicated by phone. Um, There, there was no sexual intention that night. Okay. Um, you got anything there? So how did you meet? Um, I want to say it was at our coffee shop. Okay. Uh, so, like he just walks in, you guys stack up a conversation, become friends? Yeah, it's happened many times. Invite him over to your house? Has your wife met him? I think so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you say he's come to your house several times to play video games? I think just once. Come to your house once to play video games, uh, and then you guys met at the coffee shop a couple of times? Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I said that he told you you guys met through a Craigslist ad the very first time yeah. that he posted in Casual Encounters? No. Okay. Um, well, the... In this can, can I add, is, mm -hmm. is he legitimately underage? Yeah. And he was the first time that you met him, and I said, 16. I, I asked him, I said, hey, does he know how old you were? And he said, yeah, he knows, because we had a discussion about it, and at first he was uncomfortable with it, but then he finally got over it. In this conversation, it says, she needs me to go to the store for her. My three-year-old is sick. That's one of the things I've been dealing with tonight. We're not going to have enough time. Can we get together tomorrow, May, after one? <clears throat> I'll, get, I'll get even, I'll get a hotel room or something if that would make it easier. Um, it goes on talking about coffee the coffee shop. shop, my coffee shop. Um, I'll be alone in about 10 minutes at my coffee shop. Uh, he says, can I help you with anything for spring break? Again, you said just customers, but I'll leave in here close to eight. Okay. Um, I'll be your slave. Mm, that sounds nice. I mean, we go on and on and on. And how old is your youngest child? Uh, five months. Okay. So he's telling me that when he first met you through Craigslist, that you that he had posted an ad in Casual Encounters, and that he had a lot of responses for it, but that you said that you wanted him to mess around with your wife while you watched. He said that he showed up to do that, or you guys got together and started talking about that. He found out your wife was pregnant, and then said that it never happened because she was pregnant. So here's the deal, Ralph. You and I both know what the truth is, and the truth is not what you're telling us. We're not saying you're a bad guy. We're not saying you set out thinking that this is some 15-year-old kid you're going to go bang. We're not saying that. We're saying, hell, maybe you didn't know how old he was. I don't know. I think you probably did based on what he's telling me, but things are what they are. Tell us the truth. Get it out there. Let's get this over with. Get this behind us so we can all move on. I'm telling you that. 
No, you're not. You're telling us part of what happened, but you're not telling us what's going you on. You told the officers there that you had an online identity of Jamie. He's talking about, you, you talk about in these texts when you, when this kick account, about your kids and your kid being sick and your coffee shop and that you got customers left and that you close at eight. I mean, it's clearly you. It's clearly And you. we've got a witness that puts you there. When you I say... Think, I absolutely picked him up. When you say I'm here, the witness is waiting down the street because she thought it was jacked up. She thought it was jacked up that he wouldn't tell her where he was going or anything like that. So she sits down the street and waits. And then she sees him going to the Super 8 Hotel with with you. And then she gets scared and wondering what the heck's going on. So she calls the police or calls his dad. And then who in turn calls us. So here's the deal. <clears throat> we're, we're, we're trying to give you an opportunity, all right, to help yourself out here, all right? We have a electronic, I mean, we have his device. We have, these are just photos of it. We actually have downloaded the entire device now. So we have everything that y'all said that night, everything. The thing about it is that tablet, once you, once you sent the message saying I'm here, that tablet was never on the, never in, on the internet again. So the kid conversation couldn't delete. So we have the entire conversation, but you could, okay. yeah, you can look at it. You have the, we have the entire conversation because it never hit the network again. This is a bad deal. This is this is um, uh, prostitution of with a minor, prostitution within a thousand foot of a church, which are both felonies, and then transporting for the purposes of prostitution, which is a misdemeanor. I'm telling you, that's not me. That clearly is you. That's that, that. Ralph, that's a lie. You're lying to us right now. That's clearly you. No one else. With daughter sick, coffee shop. I'm here and you're there. That's clearly you. I don't know who else you could have been talking to. There. Well, nobody, well you, I agree with you. you. Nobody. Yeah, I agree. Coffee shop and has a kid, sick kid, and all this stuff. And it's, sure just, it's you. He and, and here's the deal. He says it's you that he's talking to. You show up with condoms. He shows up with lotion. I mean, that's not true. Hold on. Yeah, there was condoms in your bag. The cop saw them. They're, that's just not absolutely not true. I did not show up there for any sexual thing. Well, then there's also weed that was in a green plastic container. Marijuana that was in a green plastic container with labels from Colorado that was in the room. Did you ever touch that bottle? No. So there's no way your fingerprints will be on it? No. Okay, because okay, we have the bottle. I don't know what to tell he you. He says, matter of fact, what? he says when the police knocked on the door that y'all were smoking, y'all were both smoking marijuana. He said that he brought a gram when you brought a gram, and you guys rolled a huge blunt, and that you guys were planning on messing around and just hadn't got there yet, and that he was going to do you a favor by whatever it was you guys were going to do, and that you were going to do him a favor by kicking him some money for spring break. Ralph, like I said, we don't think you're a bad guy. We think you made a bad decision. There's a big difference. I just don't know why you would do that. I honestly don't know. Because it's true. It's not true. I mean, he's 17. He's, he's 17. About that too. Okay, well. Well, for all practical purposes, let's say he did lie about that, all right? Jamie Tilly is you, and I can prove it. So, at, at minimum, you met with a guy at a hotel to pay him for sex. Within at a minimum. Sir. Within at a minimum. Within the feet of a church. Yeah, within the thousand feet of the church, which is a felony in itself. So, at minimum, that's what it is. All right? At minimum. So, you know... I'm giving you an opportunity here, and he told me I shouldn't, but I am. I'm giving you an opportunity to do it, to, to take responsibility for it and make it a little bit easier on yourself. Um, if you don't want to take it, that's fine, okay? I can tell you what I'm going to do tomorrow, all right? First thing tomorrow morning, I'm taking this case to the Clinton County District Attorney's Office.
Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest that they file charges for solicitation of a minor, um, possession or uh, solicitation, pardon me, prostitution within a thousand feet of a, a church, and transporting for the purposes of pro transporting for the purposes of prostitution. Okay. And then they're going to decide whether or not they're going to file charges or not. Um, obviously, I've given you the opportunity. I've given you an opportunity to help to help yourself out to tell us what happened. Um, I everything that I'm telling you, I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. So um, I know that's that, that's why we're sitting here so strongly telling you you're lying because we can prove the I, the Jamie Tilly ID. We can prove that identity is you. I mean, amazing things that we can do with 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 electronics and stuff like that that we can that we can recover and stuff like that with warrants and everything. So I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, but beyond a shadow of a doubt, that's you. After the reports emerged, but before charges were filed, the Oklahoma Senate unanimously voted to strip Shorty of privileges, including his parking space, office, and positions on committees. Although he retained his seat ability to vote, and salary. A number of Republican and Democratic Oklahoma officials called upon Shorty to step down, including Governor Mary Fallon. Shorty resigned from office on March 22, 2017, six days after being charged. And if you want to move forward from this with keep saying that's not you, then that's fine. But I don't want, I don't want to be here not giving you an opportunity to, to set the straight set set it straight and tell the truth. It doesn't sound like anything I say is gonna help. Mm, okay. I mean the truth yes. helps. And just so you know that there's also exchanged dick pics at one point. Um, and when you hopefully you didn't take a picture of your dick with your phone because that's gonna tag it whenever you send it to somebody. No, I don't. I don't do that. Okay. Well, I wouldn't. I, I don't. I don't understand why he would do this. I really don't. It's yeah. Yeah. And he said he knows you because, like you're saying, coffee shop. All that said, you guys smoked weed on the second floor of the coffee shop in the past. I just don't understand why he would do that. He has nothing to gain from this. Except screwing me. How does that help him? I have no idea. Yeah, no, I mean, he has nothing to gain. Why, why would that screw him? on probation or whatever. How, he has no idea who you are. He thinks your name is Jamie. He has no idea what your real name is. None. He referred to you as Jamie the whole time I'm talking to him. So it's not like he's going to get anything from any of this. It's not like he gains anything from this. Have you got your phone with you right now? No. Where is it at? Uh, honestly, I lost it. <clears throat> lost your phone. Because you and I both know it will be on that phone. There's nothing on that phone. You can tag it or whatever. I mean... So other than kicks, how did you communicate with him? Did you email him? I don't think I've ever had his email address. Okay. Um, but mostly it was in person on 
be honest. Okay. Like Any time that we uh, we got together, it was you know, he, like I said, he came to the house once, I and mean, we've only you know been in, met in person two maybe two or three times. Prior to the evening that we're talking about, how much sexual stuff had you guys done together? Nothing. So that was going to be the first time? We weren't doing anything. I know, not when we got there you weren't, but that was the plan for that evening. No. Clearly it was. I'm telling you it wasn't. I don't have any legitimate work for you, and you're just doing sexual stuff. Would you be interested in any sexual stuff? He says yes. Then it gets, I mean, it gets worse on down bigger as far as He's talking about it. It says, I mean, at one point, uh, I don't know, I may have said this earlier, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck you like a good little boy if you keep calling me daddy. He goes, yes, daddy, please. Did you ever have sex with him? No, never. Did you ever give him a hand job? No. Did he ever give you a hand job? I've never even seen him naked or even asked. So... This was going to be the first time that any of that had ever ever happened, no sir. Well, you can't help with that with this stuff. You can definitely help with my cock, though. That's another statement. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going through here reading what you wrote because I can I can prove that you wrote. It. I mean, that that's you. So I'm just letting you know so you know what's uh, what's coming down the pipe. So how did you con- if that's not you? How did you contact him last night or that night? I think he called me. He didn't have a phone. Uh, I'm sure he called me. That's all I can say. I don't know. How did he know that you were outside? He, well, he called me and I told him I was on my way. I told him I'd be there at a certain amount of time and I got there. Did you did you use this phone that you've lost? That was the only phone I had. Okay. On September 5th, 2017, a federal grand jury indicted Shorty on four federal sex trafficking and child pornography charges involving both the March incident and videos that Shorty was accused of distributing from his smartphone in 2012 and 2013. Shorty pleaded not guilty to these charges. After the federal charges were announced, the Cleveland County District Attorney dropped the state charges. What was that number? Uh, 265. Of the phone that you lost? Oh no, the phone. I, no, my phone was was the number I gave you earlier. That's my cell phone. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that's lost. Uh, well, I use the uh, I use uh, Hangouts for uh, for Google numbers. Um, I've always used them for all of my businesses, and so it would have been two six five. I can't remember the last four. Explain that to me. What, what does that mean? Like when you, it's like when you call him or he calls you, he calls you on this two six five number, yeah. and that goes to your cell phone mm-hmm. via Google Hangouts. Yeah, it was like it's a forwarded number. A Google Voice number? No, it, no, it goes to directly to my to my number. Okay. And so you called him back and said, "I'm here." Right. Okay. And what number would you call? Well, I think I just told him I'd be there and. 20 minutes or whatever. And then he saw you when you got down the street? Okay. Well, as far as I know, I, you keep saying down the street, I went to the, the house that he told me to go to. What house is that? You remember? 90, maybe 912, 916, something like that. Okay. Uh, Boozadin or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where he told me to meet him. And, you know, I'm trying to think of, I called him when I got there. I don't think I did. No, I didn't because I saw him on the porch. Okay. And you think that what you've told us today 
it's going to make sense to a jury of your peers? All I can say is the truth, sir. And you're not. I agree. All you can say to help yourself out is the truth, but you're not doing that. So, this 219 number, you say you lost the, the handset? After I called you, I apparently have left it on top of my car or something. I tried to find it because I needed to call uh, someone else. So you just recently lost it? Yeah, I talked to you when I was um, about to leave my house. Um, and I went back and looked on the ground. I, Anything else? Nope. That is it. We gave it a shot. Yep. Do you have any questions? The conversation that you have there, how 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 lengthy is it? How long does it go? Is it just one night? Is it more than a week? Is it a month? This one that we have right here is just that night. But we have others. Other what? Conversations. In what form? Saying the same messenger? Huh? The same messenger? I don't know. I'm going to have to get with. We don't, we'll have a. Uh, I think he said four, four this afternoon. So we took his device. What we did is we took his device. We took there was two devices. We took them. We forensically. <coughs> uh, we have a guy who forensically examines them. Then what they do is they take everything, everything off of it. Now if it leads us to another device, we get a search warrant or a court order or to another account. Say, for instance, in this particular thing. Uh, <coughs> This Jamie Tilly, all right. We we will we could we can get the IP address that's used all the IP addresses that's used with that account, all right? And we can track that IP address back to a handset. Like so, say for instance, <coughs> um, uh, the IP address that he uses, we'll track back to uh, a network that he uses. If it's a if it's a uh, wireless network. Then it'll have the, it'll be that one and stuff like that. So we have several devices that we're that we're looking at now. Okay, not sure what all that means. But well, his device, his devices. We're we're taking we're getting everything off of the two devices that we have of his. We're taking all that stuff off, all right. And our guys going through them one by one and sending us different IP addresses to look at. What it comes down to is the reason we have those conversations is that when we turned the candle on, those are the ones on there, so we took pictures of those, and then we gave them to the forensics guy. And what he'll do is he'll go get more in depth, but that way he and I don't screw it up uh, by trying to fiddle with the damn thing. So we have um, more conversations. I just don't know what what platform they're on because all we did is what was up on the tab. We took pictures of what, what was up on the tablet then. So I, we have more we have more conversations. I just don't know what platform they're on. I'll know tonight. Because uh, he'll be done with both tablets today. So. A federal jury trial had been scheduled for December 2017. On November 19th, 2017, Shorty reached an agreement to plead guilty on November 30th to one count of child sex trafficking. The prosecutor agreed to have the child pornography counts removed. Shorty was jailed immediately after pleading guilty on November 30th and faced a sentence of at least 10 years in prison. And so you don't know how long this conversation has been going on or anything right now? Correct. Yeah. So basically all that can happen is at this point is that <laughs> we get more evidence about what's going on. Because there's nowhere to go from here. Well, I'm just but more to add to it. I can find. I know you guys don't believe me, and I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise unless I have something to show you, and I, I just don't know. I find it hard to believe that you magically lost your phone on the way over here as well. It's not the first time, sir. Well, and, and the, just look at it. Okay, take all this crap in, the last in this conversation that we've had out of it, all right? 
So just put yourself in my shoes, okay? So you got a guy who gets caught in a room with uh, a minor, or in a hotel room with a minor. Um, and he comes in and talks to us, knowing that he's had a conversation with this minor on an electronic device, all right? Probably his phone, because of the way he was at the sh he was at the store, he was at the guy's store, he was in his car. So more than likely, it was on a guy on, on his phone. So you're coming in um, blind, not knowing. Also other extremely nervous. Well, I got you. I, I know, but 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 put yourself in my shoes. You're coming in this blind, only knowing that we're going to want to talk to you about you know the hotel room, and you know all of a sudden you come in and you don't have a phone. And you, you, I know you live with your phone. You have to. So that's just strange to us, you know. Is your phone <coughs> is your phone on you right now? No, it's, it's not. Is it in your car? No. Can I look in your car? Uh, sure. Okay. When did you drive up here tonight? Sorry. When did you drive up here tonight? When? What? What vehicle did you drive up here? My car. What is your Jeep? Oh, the white Jeep, mm -hmm. correct, Turkey. What year is it? Uh, I don't know, 99, 01, something okay. like that. Um, have you talked to him since that night? No. I honestly would have loved to have talked to his parents. Um, I had no idea that he was still with his parents. I wouldn't have been with a minor. Well, you knew that he was kicked out of high school. Yeah, I knew, no, I knew that. Well, he told me he dropped out of high school. Okay, you knew that he dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. And that he was trying to get his GED. Right. How old did you think he was? 20. Well, when, he, when, when, I, when we met, he told me he was 20. Okay. And, you know, he's, he's told me. Guys, I'm, t I'm just as why this is just so, I don't understand why you would do this. Because that's all we've ever talked about. Is just life and just trying to get, get him better, I guess. I had no idea he lived with his parents. Is he still in high school? Hmm. So he is out of high school. Like, did he graduate?
telling you I'm in the coffee shop. So this Kick Messenger, have you ever used it? No. I've heard of it. Um, obviously, I checked my daughter's phone to see if it's on there. How's your daughter? Thirteen. What kind of phone was it that you lost? Samsung. I may find it. I'm going back where I drove. I wish I could say it's the first time it's happened, but it's not. In early December 2017, police released their video of Shorty's arrest at a motel where he was found with a 17-year-old male prostitute. In June 2018, prosecutors revealed in a sentencing memorandum that Shorty had sex twice with the victim in the year before they were found together at the hotel. Prosecutors also informed the judge that they would seek full restitution from Shorty for the victim's losses, including the cost of any care. Shorty's lawyer said it would not yet be appropriate to comment. So why'd you tell the officers there that you you had an online identity by Jamie? I didn't say that. I said that he's called me Jamie. <clears throat> well, I don't I don't I don't mean to to uh, you did because we got body cameras and I actually saw it. So I mean there was it was they were talking to him. They were talking to you, <clears throat> and you said you had a own, that you went online or had an online identity of Jane. That's it. You didn't say Tilly, the last one, but you said Jane. I remember that, sir. Okay. He asked, I remember him asking what my name was. You, you, you asked me about email conversations earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find something for you guys. I, Is there anything there that shows what I'm saying on email? Because I honestly don't remember if I've ever emailed him. Yeah, there's shit ton of emails on that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. That's what I was asking. If you remember anything. Uh, I, I gave the officer my email address the other night. Um, I guess I'll search and see if there's anything. I'm just... I don't know if he 
saw his friends that were in high school. There's really not any way around it. How many times has he been on the second floor of the coffee shop? He never has been. So he wouldn't be able to describe what it looks like? So you asked me earlier if there had been any sexual contact in the past. Is he alleged that? He said you guys kissed. When? Before he went before May of last year. I mean, that's nothing, but still that's never happened either. Just like Jamie Tilly's not you? Just like it's somebody else with kids and daughters in the coffee shop. Somebody else who's there. And you made a bad decision. You know, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you made a bad decision. It's not the end of the world. Hmm. And if I can't prove otherwise that it is the end of the world, then I can't think of any other proof that I can show you. There's nothing. Because there's no... I mean, There absolutely would be. If what, we have, I had, what we have is the truth. If I had phone calls or if I had... But you don't because they don't exist. What we have is the truth. You know it. You know, that's I never would have thought to have to, to record a phone call or anything with a guy. I mean, he's... It was recorded. That's what we've got pictures of. I'm the conversation was recorded. I mean, that, that that is so clearly you. You and I both know that's you. Anyone we show that to is going to know that's you. Well, that's the problem. It's, like not a pro it's the truth. What, what I'm saying is the problem is, is that for some reason, you think that if you stick your head in the sand and ignore it, it's going to go away. It's not. Your best bet is to tell us the truth, tell us what happened, and then move on from this. Make this a bump in the road, not the road. I mean, it's that simple, really. This is not a defining moment. This is just a moment. No, this is... Every, you've had other things happen in your life that were awful at the time, and then now that you look back at them, they're still awful, but they didn't change who you were. They didn't make... It didn't. It's a bump.
That's all it is. It doesn't change the fact that you're a good person, or that you care about your family. That doesn't, none of that changes. But the reason you're having trouble thinking of something to say is because you know there's nothing you can I'm say. I'm not having trouble thinking of something to say. I'm trying to. Well, you're trying to decide whether or not you should tell us what happened. No, I told you everything. You, uh, okay. And no phone on you, no phone in your car? No. Do you want to find patch it out real quick? Jailed since his guilty plea, Shorty was sentenced in Oklahoma City Federal Court on September 17, 2018, to a total of 15 years in prison and 10 years of supervised release. In sentencing testimony, Shorty apologized to his family, fellow Christians, and his constituents. His attorney, who said the sentence was fair, requested that Shorty serve it at a facility in Texas with the Sex Offender Rehab Program. The Bureau of Prisons placed Shorty at the Federal Correctional Institution, Seagoville, in Seagoville, Texas. In February 2019, U.S. District Judge Day Guisti imposed a restitution fine on Shorty of $125,850, about half of the maximum amount.